Hello there, and welcome along to the A320 cockpit once again. Just wanted to give you a quick update on how things have been going over the last couple of months since I last posted the video. Um, I think we did an update in October to show you some progress. There's been quite a bit of progress since then, um, but most of it's only been in the last two days. Um, as you can see, I've got my EFIS panels installed and they're working. I'm going to demonstrate that for you in just a minute. Um, this is what it's going to look like with the cutouts in place. Not painted yet, obviously, but coming along nicely. Um, I think you can see that it's starting to take shape and actually look like something now. Um, the EFIS panels are almost complete. Um, I've got one encoder left to wire in here on both sides and uh, the units for the barometric pressure to wire in. Uh, everything else is working and uh, I'm going to demonstrate that to you now and then show you the chaos of wiring that exists behind all this to make it work. Thanks very much for coming along and having a look. Okay folks, this is what the cockpit's looking like right now. I'm still using the 15 inch monitor but uh, it'll do for now. Um, the captain's seat and his view of his information. Um, the primary flight display and the navigation display there, sitting reasonably well behind the cutouts. And then further over here we've got our uh, standby instruments. I'm going to tidy up that cutout in due course. It was easier than cutting out loads of small holes. Um, the engine and warning display, system display, and the nice big clock. And uh, gear lever and uh, auto brakes will be going over there. There will be a bit more information being pasted onto this, decals and uh, uh, V-speeds, flap speeds, that sort of labelling will be going on. Um, still have the touch screen there with the FMC on it. Um, the engine panel is complete. Um, throttle is still the same, although they are giving me some trouble at the moment. And moving up here, we can see the autopilot module and the EFISs, which I am really pleased with. Um, I've spent pretty much all day yesterday wiring these in. Um, and I'm going to take this panel off in just a moment and show you what, what lies beneath uh, the utter horror that is all the wiring. Um, both panels are connected together for most of the switches. For example, the, uh, the push switches for constraints, VOR, sorry about that, NDB and so on. Rather than using up five inputs there and five inputs there, I've soldered the wires together so the constraint switch on both sides does exactly the same thing. It's effectively two switches that activate the same control, um, so they're linked. Um, this didn't work very well for the encoders, so I had to pull that apart and do it again. Um, the clamp is a temporary feature. If we move up here and have a look behind, it doesn't look very pretty, does it? Um, it is a nightmare. It makes sense to me, um, in that I've, I've got a rough idea of where everything goes and what it's all doing, um, but it's... yeah. God forbid I ever have to take this apart. Um, install these lovely little bits of washing pipe um, to feed some of the wires down below. Um, this is my original BU0836 board which is carrying most of the inputs from the, the flight control unit itself. And then most of the inputs for the EFUS panels, pretty much all of them, run down through these two pipes to uh, another BU0836 which is behind this panel which conveniently just pops off. And there we can see the monitor. I've removed the bezel from that just to make it uh, sit a little bit more flat. And behind that, there's the uh, the other or the next B0836 card and the wires going in there. Not used up all the inputs yet, um, but it's it's working more than adequately there. Um, I've got a third one ready to go for the overhead and that sort of thing, which will be coming along next. Um, further over, you can see that I've uh, completed the glare shield on that side, or, well, at least put it in place, and the 17-inch monitor is sitting there ready to go with the, um, the white connector, which is just going to duplicate the view from this side direct to this side. Uh, there'll be no independent control. Whatever you change on one side in the nav display will change on the other. So let's jump in and uh, see the EFAS panels at work. Okay, so this is the view from the captain's seat. Um, we're looking at the primary flight display and the nav display. And just up here I've got my electronic flight information system, or EFIS panel. Um, at the moment, uh, we're looking at the nav display in, looks like, nav mode. 
which is the mode here and then it's set to 20 mile range as we can see here so does it work? well let's find out so if I change the range we can see the range changing on the screen reducing and then increasing to its maximum of 160 miles in this particular view change the mode over to arc and then over to plan and back again arc, nav, VOR it's currently set to the uh, Dublin VOR which is what the radio is defaulting to at the moment and finally ILS mode not sure if you can see the colour change there but the, um, the ILS bars are magenta whereas the VOR ones are blue again I can change the range doesn't really have an effect in this particular mode so you can see that's working Okay. now um, if I turn the, the knobs on this side you'll have to trust me on this because the camera angle is not large enough but um, it does actually work exactly the same simply because the uh, using the wonders of mouse trapping and that sort of thing I've been able to trap the functions I just assign the same functions to the switches on both sides um, showing you some of the other functions I can set my ADF and you can see it appear there or via war similarly with uh, ADF2 and via war2 and again the, uh, the switches on the other side work just the same so I click over ADF1 and it appears there for me and I'm really really happy with that um, we can cycle through our constraints well there aren't any at the moment we can see what waypoints exist I uh, need to up the range a bit for that and uh, should be able to see some waypoints displayed there there they are it's taking a minute to come in but uh, yeah rather a lot of them so we need to bring the range down on that and there we go uh, via wars similarly NDBs and uh, airports obviously EIDW there but if I bring the range up again here we go again I don't know how well you can see that on the screen but we can see uh, do, 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 what have we got there that's Clon, what was it? Clonmore can't remember uh, Shannon, Kerry, Farron 4, Cork and then over here some of the UK ones and Northern Ireland of course here EGAA if you can make that out that's Aldergrove um, so it works and it works really well and I'm absolutely thrilled with how that's working um, and there's not a lot else to show you just at the moment um, overall progress has been made and I'm really pleased uh, with how it's going